ready for this? Audio looks good. Clapping for the start of the stream. Yes. How is everyone? Uh, you know, let's just start this nice and easy. Uh, I haven't done near as many streams as I thought I'd get done in the last couple of months. It has been just one thing after another that I just don't have a good time slots for streams. Now, I could do them like at 9 o'clock on a Wednesday night, but that doesn't seem like that much fun. And what if something happens and we have to go long on the stream? Then I'm going to be up until like 1 o'clock in the morning. It's just, I, I tell you, life is so hard. Not really. Hope everyone is doing well. We got a lot of cool people in chat. I see Bill Steele. I saw Mike at Never Let the Machines Win. Uh, Nit from Vintage PC is here. James at Rushmar 3D. John Mack. Uh, Derek Cirillo is here and he misses these streams well. I, I appreciate that. We'll see what we can do about that. Always raining in Kansas City. It absolutely is. It has been raining like crazy. We've had water in the basement twice so far this season, which is kind of unusual. Two times, three times a year, and we're not talking about a lot of water. Uh, you know, maybe a, you know, a good-sized puddle that's just irritating enough. But yeah, there's been a lot of rain this year. So today we have the FL Sun, and let me super racer. Okay, FL Sun super racer. It is a Delta. It's supposed to be fast. We did do a FL Sun Delta. I believe it was the QQ5. We did that late last year, I believe. But do you know how many times I had to punch in Super Racer because I kept punching in Speed Racer? And then every time I thought about Speed Racer, I would go down a rabbit hole of singing the Speed Racer song. So it's been, it's been an interesting couple of days. Let's just put it that way. So... Speed Racer uh, will come up many times during this stream, I am sure. Um, so there's a couple of things that we're going to do today. Uh, I <laughs> Again, I have tried to set up Nightbot so that it will put out some information. It will grab the text users so we can do giveaways. Giveaways is still telling me that my stream isn't live. We really got to figure this out one of these days. So there's that. So there's going to be a lot of messing around with this. I can already see it now. So now it is populating some eligible users. So maybe it's going to work today. Uh, Andrew Rogers, five bucks for the giant spun fudge. Let's see if... Uh, uh, stream labs is working today and it will actually cue that so the first thing that you're going to see oh here it is for the giant sponge fund nice all right so the first so i've got some timers set and hopefully they're spaced well enough apart that it won't be super annoying they're going to be around 15 minutes or so but one is going to be the printer info so how big is it what's it cost where can you get it so hopefully that works and then the other one is about the contest that Printed Solid and I have partnered up for. If you haven't heard, and it is the U.S. and Canada, I know the international folks are, are somewhat upset about that, but there's not a lot we can do about it because it is filament and there's going to be a whole lot of it. So that's going to be hard to ship. But the point of the contest is to, you know, get some creative ideas out there and for more people to try Jesse PLA because it is really good. Um, it has, it's become pretty much my go-to filament. Uh, so we've partnered up for a couple of contests. We'll talk more about them, but that is one of the timers, the ads that you're going to see. It's the information to go sign up for those contests because they do end in a couple of days. So get your entries in. There's two contests. One, who can reuse an empty filament spool the best? I've already got some really crazy entries. Uh, so that's a really fun contest. So anything that you've done to reuse those filament spools, put it in there. You might win some filament. And the other one is firmware related. And when we got to talking about what should we do with firmware, it, well, you can do all kinds of things, right? It, and we tried to, these two contests, we tried to bridge the gap. You know, with spools and things like that, you could get pretty arty. Uh, and that's a different type of maker. But then you have the guys that like to code and 
and do all these tweaks and things. And I've seen some people do some crazy stuff with firmware, you know, play songs and, uh, you know, the scraping the bed, do it, all kinds of weird stuff. So that is the firmware portion. And extra points if it really doesn't do anything except be cool. You know, if, if it helps your print, uh, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> but if it, uh, you know, cooks eggs, then that's going to be much better, ranked a lot higher. So check those out. Hopefully our ad is coming through and uh, you'll be able to get all of those links. <sighs> so hopefully that is everything. Let's get started here. Again, I still don't have a ceiling cam. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see with this camera over here, but we can give it a shot anyway. These deltas, they're pretty much just like four parts or so. There's not a whole lot to put together. So, um, so we shouldn't have a lot that you can't see on the front view, but let's give it a shot anyway. We'll see if anything's working. So at least you can see something. Okay. We do have a new subscriber. Thank you very much. Those are Chinese characters and I don't know what they are. Um, but there is an AI on the end. So thank you for the sub. This does say right on the top, voltage 220, plug EU. So we definitely need to remember to check that power supply. So this one is 330 in the Z. So it's fairly tall. So I'm guessing it's the, you know, the height of this box. Because most of these just come in, I'm telling me the whole thing's wrapped. Most of these just come in a top for the FL Sun machines. It's just a top, a base, and some legs. And the legs are pretty much the whole length of this. So, so this is probably pretty accurate to how big it's going to be. A manual. Um, we can take a look at that. Good. We so we got some tools. Deltas are always a lot of fun. The effector arms on these. Ooh, they're carbon fiber. Fancy. Uh, this is a pretty affordable delta as well. Uh, you, right now, I just looked this morning. Right now. You can get these for like $4.29, 4 dollars something like that on your favorite international reseller. Uh, there is a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. Yes, that is definitely an EU plug. Doesn't do us a lot of good. Manuals are overrated, I agree. Jerry from 3D Printing and Painting is here. Hello. How are you, sir? Got linear rails. Those are labeled as FL Sun steppers, so I couldn't even tell you what those are. They are dampened a bit, so it's kind of an interesting design. This this thing's pretty meaty. It actually has a thumb screw for each column alignment so that's good to see a lot of times that's one of the weak parts of the less expensive deltas is that you never get a good measure on the end stop so that so the actual distance of your tower and that's what makes you able to calibrate these well is if all of those you can get all those towers as accurate as possible and when you use you know who knows what type of end stop switch or, um, you know, whatever screw or something they have hitting that end stop switch isn't maybe fastened all that well, <laughs> or who knows what they might be doing, right? When you have those scenarios, it's really hard to get a delta dialed in. So that kind of thing is going to improve the delta design greatly. But so far, so good. This thing looks pretty nice. See what kind of extruder and other bits they have on here. They give you 
oil and an extra heater. And if you remember, if you watched the last FL Sun Delta we did, we made it about 75% through a print and the heater failed. Which was very unfortunate. Um, and then I really never did anything with that printer ever again. In fact, I gave it away to one of you fine folks. Yes, it is set to 230. So we're going to want to change that. Done. We'll set this over here for a second. I need one more flat area down here that I can put a whole bunch of crap on. That that would be uh that would be real handy. Ooh, curly cord screen. Here's our effector. What's going on in the chat? Nice. Uh, so this looks to be some sort of super volcano-ish. It is not one. It does have two part cooling fans. So that's good to see. They are the slimline 30s. Uh, one on each side. It does have an aluminum plate. Oh, so that's probably a sensor mount for the magnetic type, but there is a longer block on it. So that is, so why would you have a volcano or whatever for, for people that don't live and breathe this stuff, which I need to remember that more often. Um, so you would put that on there in hopes that you could print faster. Now, that's not always the weak point that keeps you from printing faster, but if you can print faster, that would be a good place to start. Uh, they do give you a fair sample of filament. Not bad. It is not shoulder throwy, if you uh, get that reference. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for myself on that one. Uh, I have a piece of sandpaper here. What's the bed surface like? Hmm. Not sure the intention of this sandpaper, but it's here. All right. So next up, this looks to be like it is a BMG clone for sure. It is injection molded. Uh, but it looks to be like a triangle lab. It's not. I've seen a lot of these clones. Um, this one looks pretty familiar. So in the Triangle Lab stuff, if you're going to buy a clone, most of it's not that bad, but it's really not that cheap either. I think these are probably, like a BMG is probably like half price of what a real one would cost. So it's not like your, you know, $3 V6 clone that we used to buy all the time, right? Uh, it's, it's not, for the most part, I've, I've seen, the stuff that I've seen looks pretty good. And then a leveling sensor. Just some sort of foot they let you put on there for this. Interesting. Okay, so that's everything in the box. We do get some cables and such, but I probably don't need those. In fact, that one's going to go in the organization bin. I guess I can take out my filament and my sandpaper here. Okay, so let's get to some fun stuff. Mr. Dave Randolph over at Printed Solids. Uh, I don't know if he's in the chat or not, but he and I spoke last evening. And he said that he would not mind if I gave you all some rolls of filament. So that's what we're going to do. So just three rolls today, we'll do them throughout the stream. We'll give away one now, but if you've ever done the giveaways here, I usually do them with Nightbot and we do the phrase that pays, right? So here is the rules to that. Yes, it is only the United States and Canada. We can't ship international. We being printed solid. I have nothing to do with this. That's, I, I'm just the guy that gives it away. I'm the conduit to you. So 
it's US, Canada. Coffee. Um, I'm going to put a phrase in the chat. You are to put, if you would like to win a, ro a roll of filament, you will put that phrase back into the chat. It is not case sensitive. You can only enter the phrase once. If you enter it more than once, it will nullify it and it will put you out of the contest. So those are the rules. Now you need a phrase. So I'm going to put a phrase in the chat. You copy it back if you want to win. Then we'll spin it and uh, Printed Solid will send you a spool of filament. I believe it is color of your choice. Uh, they have lot. They have 43 different colors. So uh, let's see how this goes. And also, if you've ever seen me do one of these, it usually takes a couple of times uh, before this starts working. In fact, I'm going to refresh this once. There it is. Boom. Moderators can win, by the way. They're hardworking folks. They should be able to win. Enable anti spam and there's your phrase. Enter. Hopefully it comes up. There it is. Enter Jesse in the chat. That is Dave's dog, by the way. Uh, and uh, you will be entered to win some filament. They, again, they have 43 colors, which is mind boggling. Uh, if you enter to win one of the contests, and I haven't seen one of our timers yet, but I haven't been paying really close attention. Um, if you enter one of our contests, the winner of both categories, either reuse spool or the firmware, you get all 43 colors. I mean, you can imagine how much filament that is. I mean, it's a table full. So definitely, if you have a contest entry, get it into me. Uh, Hopefully the information will be rolling through here so that you can uh, get all the lowdown of how that's going to work. While you are all punching that in, let's have a, a look-see. For some people, a lifetime. For some, a month. Absolutely. It would take me a while to get through 43. I think we went through and counted my whole collection because um, we were trying to get it organized, which, you know, failed, of course. Uh, but out of all the filament that I've had over the last five years or plus, all the different types, all, I mean, colors, sizes, you know, I, there's probably 15 different types of filament over there. I think I have somewhere around 150 spools. And that's a collection of, you know, many, many years. I've got stuff, I've got like Nylon 610, which they don't even make anymore, that I bought in 2016. So, so 43 would be quite the collection for some of you. It really doesn't tell you much about assembly, so it looks fairly straightforward. Oh, that's the touch screen bracket is what that is. Cool, cool, cool. All right, is everybody in to win? Let's see if this thing's going to work. Bill Johnson is the winner. Let's see if it comes through. There it is. Won the giveaway. Nicely done, Bill. If, if you are a winner today, I will punch this in the chat a couple of times. If you are a winner today, email me all your name, your address, all your information. Email it to that email address right there. And I will get that over to Dave and he will get you some filament. Congratulations, Bill. We'll do one of those kind of in the middle, maybe when we start printing. And then we'll do another before we leave. That will keep you all trapped here with me all afternoon. It shouldn't be that long a stream today. <laughs> That's what I always say. 
All right. So let's see what we got. Where's our hardware? Here it is. Where's the Tylenol? You are very welcome, Bill. I hope you enjoy it. Like I say, I use it all the time. I have really good luck with it. It looks like there's only a couple sizes of screw, which I like that. That's always handy. So, where's the base? Oh, we're starting with the top. Here's the top. Boy, it is humid down here today. Wow. So it looks like we're feeding filament just through a blind hole there. Gotcha. These kits have come such a long way. Just how much easier they are to build and deal with than they used to be. I'm starting to sound like an old person. Which, speaking of old person, <laughs> uh, William Barnett, thank you for the sub. Speaking of old person, next Saturday, July 17th, I will be 40 years old. That's terrifying, isn't it? I know it is for me. Uh, I can tell you that YouTube makes you older. <laughs> uh, all right. So most of this is 22s, and there are a few shorties in here as well. It looks like 10s. But it's uh, M4 hardware. It's pretty, pretty stout. Did they offer you any sort of label on these? Doesn't matter as long as you get the plug right, right? <laughs> uh, I try to stay young. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, A Green sub. Thank you very much. Uh, these should be labeled here. Let's take a look at these plugs. On a Delta, you really don't have a, a for those non-Delta users. I don't. I don't know a ton about Delta. There's a lot of a lot more people that know more about Delta than I do, of course, as with everything. Uh, but with Delta, it really doesn't matter which one you would like to call XYZ, because they're really not. That, that is only relation to the board. Um, a, B, C, uh, however you would like to, to designate it, what makes sense in your mind, that's fine. But um, that really doesn't make any difference except how the board would be labeled, right? So that's all you really need to know with one of these kits. If they have labels on the motor and they think that one of these towers is designated in a certain area because of the way it's wired, make sure that both those labels match because you could introduce something like mirroring or something where the print wasn't coming out how you think it should. So just, that's pretty much the only note on these kinds of kits. Lines up flush too. That's awesome. So that makes it really easy to get these level. So they've got four screws at the at the top of each tower, and it's flush. But this table isn't very level, but it's flush with the top. That makes things so much easier. Can I open the board enclosure and comment on the? It's actually on the top. Uh, so it's bent, but there's a there's a top we can open. So we can take a look at it if we flip over. Uh, it is a maker base board. I can tell you that already. Uh, which one I don't know, but it's very small. So I'm guessing it's a Robin Nano or something like that. I don't see the brand on it. But uh, when we get it flipped over, let's uh, take a look then. Uh, has anybody seen any sort of timer come across? And there, Mitch 3D, welcome Mitch, by the way. But Mitch, uh, that's a great suggestion. That's how I prefer to set them up. We, we like to call the one in the back Z. Your left is X and your right is Y. That's what makes most sense to me in my mind. 
So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That is kind of a, some people use that as their standard. Joseph Lawrence just subbed. Thank you very much. Maybe that's Joey Lawrence from Blossom. Whoa. Pulling that one. Yeah, see, Nitro's going to come back with ABC. <laughs> uh, Cliff is here. What's up, Cliff? Just all in what makes sense to you. Um, I can tell you that building a hang printer will uh, change your life forever on what you call things. Because <laughs> uh, you really have to get that straight in your head to be able to uh, figure out how that's going to work. All right. So that was why. We're just going to repeat all this. So... You know, Nightbot, it doesn't feel like it's really changed much over the years. Like they're upgrading things or anything like that. These things are in eight. How long have we been running? We've been running for 30 minutes. Oh, there's one right there. Okay. So there's that. Good enough. So there, like I said before, you're going to have ones for the contest. So that will give you the YouTube video that describes all of that. I actually had a lot of fun making that because I got to break some stuff. And then uh, there'll also be another one with all the printer information if you want to know things about build size or good stuff like that. I'm trying to be more ready for these things to get you more information. Because most of the time it's like, hey, you want to build something? Cool. Let's do that. I'm so professional when it comes to YouTube. Yes, every 15 minutes. Twelve or twenty-four, that is a great question. I'm just gonna take a swag and say it's twenty-four. Pretty much everything out now is twenty-four. I haven't seen a twelve in a while. But we can take a look. Very professional. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, they they do have some dampeners on the motor. It's just a little piece of cork is what it looks like. I I mentioned that earlier. I haven't seen that in a while. That used to be a thing. You just slide something in between there. So that's interesting. Okay, excellent. Thank you, James. Appreciate that. Chat goes by a little fast. It will be very high. I will have to spin it on its side anyway so that you guys can look at it. But I think we can still do that after it's assembled. It does have, what do they call it, aviation connectors? Is that what we like to call these? It has like a, I think it's a five pin sleeve for the effector. So that's cool. Makes it easier to take apart. That's one thing that always really irritated me about CR10s and, CR10s? Boy, it's been a long time. CR10s and printers that came out with the, the, sidecar box that follows you around everywhere it's like a little brother and uh that's one thing that always irritated me is they never quite got that right they would put those connectors on there for like half of it and then the rest of them would be directly connected what's the point if i can't completely remove it uh why why even put any of them on there don't and it never really got any better like as we continued on the cr10 line and you know, people started making, like, TiVo jumped in the game, and they continued doing printers that style. Everybody did it the same way. And then we finally got away from that design because it was really annoying.
What's up, James? Sonic Alchemy James is here. You'll be risking your original CR10 today. Turning on slow mode for chat. I'm not sure how that would impact the giveaway. It might never go through. Silent Steppers, you can almost bet that these are 2208s or something like that. I don't... Uh, Nitrum is saying about the having a dampener on that motor, you would have less cooling. Um, these are only things that some folks, not saying who, would think about when using their Delta. Because some of us can print a Benchy in five minutes. I don't know on something like this if you would ever be concerned with um, with that dampener causing you cooling issues. I could be wrong. I've been wrong a time or two today. Show that somewhat level. Test some modified firmware. That's always fun. The stock hotbeds are discontinued. Round ones are... Uh, I don't see a lot of round ones. Does E3D make a round 310? They have some odd sizes. I don't know that they make a round one. I've, I haven't looked. And they used connectors for the Passover 10M. Yeah, I've seen a few melty ones of those. Yeah, XT60 definitely uh, would handle, would be a better choice to, for more current. XT60, that's the, I like those connectors, but they take a little bit of getting used to. You have to uh, have the knack for putting them together. Takes a second. You have to melt a few before you can... Uh, Get that right. It's pretty much the same thing. Only we do it for the top. 220. It is 24 volts. I can see that from the cover. Where's our logo at? There's our logo. Something slightly slide aroundy in here. What might that be? Oh! This looks like a pack of smokes. Uh, <laughs> there's a hidden drawer in here. You know how I like things in hidden drawers. Oh, nice. Now, this is what it's all about right here. So inside my hidden drawer right here is a box with a really cool medallion thing in it. Now I like this printer. I don't even care if it prints at this point. We have one. Yes. Hidden drawer for the win. All right. Careful, careful. Oh, come on now. It's just a little snug. There's that one. There's that one.
And there's that one. Nice. Sweet. I just had that same thought that we always have every time we do one of these. I gotta find a place to put this. I I was very proud of myself. Did the flood destroy many benches? Most benches were saved during the flood. 3D Gustner's here. What is up? Careful. Don't break, don't break. <laughs> uh stereotypical free gift. Uh no, we were we were saved during the flood. The benches were all right. The Armada lives. We did okay. We didn't get a ton. I thought it was going to turn out real bad because I mean it was raining buckets. Uh, all the gutters were. I mean it. The gutters couldn't even keep up. So I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was, but we turned. It turned out it let up just in time. So we didn't get completely hosed, as it were. Yes, uh, Wago, or whatever they call those, I agree, they are very handy. Um, we've used those on a couple of projects. They work out really well, but you're right, you have to have a good location for them. Because they're, uh, they're quite large. Wago, Wago, whatever they call them. Benchies don't float. Benchies do float. They just float capsized. Well, the light finally decided to come on. I've got one light that I keep meaning to replace, but everything down here is just uh, shop lights, except for the up front lights. So there's like, I don't know, 20 of them down here. I get really tired of buying and replacing them. So if it works eventually, then I just let it go. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. First boat for fish instead of people. <laughs> the printer is for Aussies. You could definitely print upside down on this. No problem. John Strand is here. I don't know if I said hi to him. Hello, John. Yes, we are going to print upside down. No, we're not really. There's a notice on the back of this that says, this is 210. Or this is 220. Please contact us. If you need 110. I really don't have a whole lot left. The effector should um, just kind of snap on these. How fast am I going to print? Hmm. I have a Delta profile that I use on a lot of these just out of the gate. I don't think it's very fast. Um, I'm gonna, when we get the effector on, we'll see how the, how that setup is going to look. Because most of the time, in, in my experience, you have to get the retraction right because you spend a lot of time doing retractions. But we'll have to see what type of setup we have here. I'm not exactly sure how long that tube's gonna be and all that good stuff. You can print really, really fast, but it's gonna be pretty stringy. 
Unless you get it configured. Ah, <laughs> such a pro G code. Watch it blow up. You did. We did tackle that. Switching over to 110. But thank you for the reminder. It's always welcome. Uh, Claudio, you are very welcome for the videos. I'm glad they help. Are deltas more precise than other printers? I don't think it really matters. Precision? Because it's a delta, because it does, it does G-code, it, it transforms G-code to make the delta motions. That's really the only difference. I mean, that the handler and everything is, is doing it the same way. Because it's a delta, and it does its thing, that's not going to make it more precise. But, because of it being a delta, and the how the effector is set up, which if you don't know the term effector, that's just the, the word they use for delta that where your hot end sets. Uh, because of that, that configuration, it could be more precise. Um, but only because of weight acceleration, it, you would reduce weight. You could reduce weight greatly in the delta configuration. Um, so by that aspect, maybe more precise. But at the end of the day, really, it nothing. There's nothing about the delta that is going to get by you anything more than any other 3D printer, they pretty much work the same. It just all depends on kinematics and what you've done with them. And quality. I mean, you have a quality factor. Not every 3D printed part is going to be the same, right? This is my touchscreen holder. Where do I want the touchscreen holder? I kind of like having this secret drawer right here. Maybe we'll put it on this side. Or I could just drop it on the floor. I thought this was one of those spring-loaded T-nuts. It's just a giant one. Where'd it go? Here it is. I did something, I was going to say this earlier, speaking of getting old, I did something in my back the other day that it does not like. It's getting better now, but for a couple of days, uh, yeah, it wasn't fun. <laughs> Dave Randolph is here. Thank you for joining, Dave. Uh, yes, we have a we have a banner ad running for the contest. So hopefully everybody will check it out and consider entering said contest. Okay, so this is a good time. We can flip it over and we can have a look at the guts if you wanna. I think they, oh wait, they give you a picture of the board, but they've cleverly not badged it in case they would like to switch it with something else. Yes, if nobody has that information, Printed Solid and I have a contest going on. Uh, you're going to hear me talk about it because I want to see as many entries as possible. I'll talk about it during the stream many times. They don't give you a wrench for the top just to put it together. You mean they don't give me a wrench so that I can take it apart? Maybe they don't want me to take it apart. Um, we have a contest going on. We have two contests going on. Each one, first prize, is 43 spools. Every color of printed solid Jesse PLA filament. The contests are as follows. The first one is what can you do with your leftover empty filament spools? Doesn't even have to be 3D printer related. Just what did you do after you have all these spools sitting around? Did you create something awesome? 
Did you create a Rude Goldberg machine that um, waters your lawn? I don't know, but I want to see the craziest thing that, uh, that there is out there using empty filament spools. And the second one is firmware related. Now, when I say firmware related, that is also loose because I really don't care. It doesn't, doesn't matter what firmware you use. Uh, it could be a number of things. I've seen crazy things on 3D printers over the years. Everything from, you know, blades that pull the print off, uh, arms that come out and pull the, the flex sheet off, uh, custom boot screens, animated boot screens, music, all kinds of different things on 3D printers. And that's the stuff that I want to see. So if it's firmware related, this is for all the people that like to write code and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, send those in. We want to see them and you could win some filament. All right. What do we got here? It has a giant fan on it. It is a Nano V3. It does have crimp connectors over there. There, you can take a look. It's pretty much all you get. There's four drivers on it. We're just going to guess that those are 228s. I'm probably pretty sure they are. I guess we could check. But not much in there. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Dave Randolph, I have seen that too. That is one of my favorite videos. I've watched that like a dozen times. So there it is. That's all the magic that's that's behind here. That's all we got. All right. So let's throw that back on real quick. We'll put our effector on. I laid it over here. If I was a spool holder, where would I want to be? I think I'd want to be right there. Banggood wants a hundred dollars to ship. I didn't see that. No, that's a, a, a good question, Gusner. All of the, the bed and the input voltage, those all have crimped ends. So that's good. But the heater wires for the hot end, they do have solder on them. They are tinned underneath that terminal. So that's not so great. But at least it's not the input wires or the bed wires. They are crimped. They have both heaters hooked up, so I'm hoping that one of them is for the hot end fan, so it can be controlled in G code. I like to see that. Now I have to get these back into this terminal. That would be an interesting bed slinger. It's kind of an interesting idea if you think about it. 
like a bread box style 3D printer. What else is going on? What other stories do I have to amaze you? Can't think of any. It's been kind of slow around here. Just trying to get stuffs done. So I will tell you a story that Big Tree Tech probably doesn't want me to tell, but it's the truth. Um, so as you probably all know, 75% uh, correct, there you go. <laughs> Uh, you can't expect everything to be correct. Uh, so, is there foam under it for quiet? That I don't know. It has a, oh yes, underneath the base, there is insulation. Uh, so, Big Tree Tech. So, as you probably all know, I work with Big Tree Tech quite a bit. I've got a lot of their boards. I test a lot of their boards. I make videos on them. They are a Pretty good low cost solution if you'd like to flip out a main board. You can get into a Big Tree Tech board for 20, 30 bucks, somewhere in there, right? Now, all, as always, your mileage may vary. They are not my sponsor. They don't support me financially in any way. I just test the stuff because I know a lot of folks out there would like to see how it works. So, I do that quite often. Well, of course, I currently have a handful of boards from Big Tree Tech that I have not made videos on. And the one that I was most interested in was the SKR2, so the new evolution of SKR, because, you know, we had 1.1, one, 1.3, one, 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 and they all came out relatively quickly. And that changed a lot of things as far as main boards go because of the fact that they have all of the data connections that you need. Will that even go there that far? I didn't realize it was on that side. Uh, they have all the data connections that you would need to communicate with a smart driver, either SPI or UART, built into the board. You don't have to use jumpers or anything like that, which makes it so much easier to use. So that was a game changer. And when that came out, when uh, 1.3 was, the, I think, probably the most popular one, 1.1 one, one didn't turn out so well. When that came out, at the price point, uh, there was just, you know, nothing that would even come close in the market with all of those features. And nobody was really doing that at the time with all the integrated settings. So it was pretty cool. But again, they flew through, nice, they flew through all these different versions of it quickly. And 1.4 had some things about it that I didn't like, uh, like the fact that they went from they did put some more plugs on there, and they have Parallel Z, and because and, the one three only had one plug and all that good stuff. Um, there was a few things I liked better about the one three than the one four. One four did a few other things. Then they had this this myriad of mini boards. I mean, just boards coming out all the time. They had a Rumba board. They had uh, turbo boards, LPC seven LPC boards. They had STM boards. I mean, just tons of them coming out. Well, then here comes SKR2. So it's finally the full rendition of the 1314 series. And I have received many of them. And they all have just a little bit different issues. So first off, they use... We could get into a really long explanation here. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see what we're supposed to be doing next on this printer, and then I will talk about it as we go. Um, so the first problem with the SKR2, they tried to implement a feature where if you happen to get your, because they have removable separate drivers, if you were to happen to get your driver flipped 180, they tried to implement a feature on the board to keep you from shorting it out. Uh, protection, which is nice. Now, you don't see that on boards very often. So it would protect the board and the driver if you happen to get it installed wrong. So that's cool. Well, there's a MOSFET involved in there. And the first batch, we call, we call them the revision A boards. The first batch, they didn't get it quite right. So that would actually impact some drivers and make them short out. It, it would cause the driver to fail. And that's not good. Um, so they quickly went back. And uh, they pulled, they, you know, they, they notified everybody, 
hey, this is happening. And they offered you quite a few different ways to, to get out of this. They would full up refund your money. You could try to repair it yourself and they would give you money off and some parts, whatever. There's a couple different ways they try to get out of it, which, you know, at least they try to get out of it. Not all companies would. Um, but then they released a revision B board. And they fixed that issue. They used a different MOSFET, all fine and good. Well, I don't know yet. Because I have had many revision B boards. And they all do something just a little bit strange. And it really sucks. Because I like the board. I like the updates they've made. I want it to be good. Because I think it's a big step up from the 1.4 boards, but until all of these issues are sorted, I've got like hours in testing on these things and making a video that I can't do anything with because they all do something just a little bit strange. And most of everything that I have found about it, it is around the encoder on the LCD and the SD card. So I'm trying, I, I put together all kinds of video and I made a spreadsheet and all this to send over to Big Tree Tech and they are looking at it. But uh, I hope they get it all resolved soon. And the, the big thing is, I mean, if it was firmware related, fine, we could fix it, right? Um, but I don't think it is. I, I think we have a hardware problem. And I don't know what the percentage of boards that this is going to impact. You know, it might be very, very low. I was just unlucky, right? Let's hope that that's the case. But um, it is definitely not a small issue, I would say. So we'll see how it goes. Which way do we want to put this? Do they have any suggestions? So you heard it from me. But the SKR testing has not gone all that well. It really doesn't matter a whole lot, but they want, this is a pretty interesting design. Again, I really hope we get this figured out because I would like to start using the board. I have it installed on log right now and the board that I have on log is just devastated. It's one of my original 1.3 boards. Uh, it's got pins missing. <laughs> it's got, I mean, I, I have put it through the ringer. So I'd kind of like to get another one going and SKR2 would be a great fit for that. So this effector just kind of snaps in here on some springs. I mean, it's pretty snug. But you can see these sockets, a lot of these will just snap into the kind of a ball joint. These just have springs that hold the arm in place. So that's kind of interesting. Free shipping from Banggood, 30 to 40 days. Now that is more like what I would expect to see. Yes, old curmudgeon, uh, and that, that is important to note too. Thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, the Rev B boards should have a second QC sticker on the bottom of them, and the MOSFET is different. Uh, the MOSFET for protection is different. It starts with a Q, I believe. I don't remember exactly, but that's a first good step. If you have a Rev A board that only has one sticker on the back, be sure you get a hold of Big Tree Tech and get another one. Um, yes. Old promotion, fingers crossed for you that uh, everything works out well. I hope it does. Thank you, Gusner. Uh, how would you compare the build quality of a, to a Prusa printer? Seems this printer will be difficult to maintain the sourcing parts. Well, that is a completely different story, right? Uh, and that's where we get to talking about support. Uh, Prusa supports through and through, and, and that's part of the cost of a Prusa printer. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be one to tell you that Prusa is, you know, super awesome. They're the best printer in the whole world, but they are consistent and they are supported. Their firmware makes them extremely valuable. 
And the fact that they patch it and, you know, come up with different updates and such and add features and all these different things, that makes them valuable. Uh, but you are right. Something like this, it's going to be pretty proprietary. It's going to be pretty hard to source parts. You can't just go to the store and, you know, the, their online store and buy things for it. So, as far as quality goes, I mean, you know, we're talking wrap wrap 3D printed part style versus something that's made out of metal with linear rails. I mean, so, so this is going to look pretty attractive, but you don't have the Prusa backing here. So, it's kind of apples and oranges when it comes to that. What do they talk about the extruder? They said they have a film. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Film switch. Okay, I guess we will wire it up, and it's all color coded, so no thinking for me. Uh uh. There's one for leveling. What are these fans? Oh, those are part fans, I bet you. That's right. It's got one on both sides. Okay. We did that. We can plug in our connector. This guy. Right. Yeah. How does it compare to a CBCNC Artemis? It does not. <laughs> uh, they're light, light years away. So main cable, they actually want you to put it. That's kind of cool. They got it, so you can put it down in the extrusion to get it out of the way. That's nice. But it also doesn't cost as much as an Artemis. You know, I haven't, I didn't get to go to Murph, which, which, uh, that's another story altogether that I won't bore you with, but, uh, I haven't caught up with the CNC guys, see me CNC guys, and to see what's going on over there, um, because they have another one, they have a really big printer now, Artemis used to be kind of the go-to for them, and now they have another one that I haven't seen in action yet. What do I do with all the hardware? No way I clean that up. No. Why would I clean anything up? All right, so we have some shorties here. Where would I like that installed? Right here. So it's kind of on a. Oh. Yep, I can feel my back. Up, 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 up. So the extruder is kind of setting right here, kind of on a hanger. Widen that out a bit. Like I said, kind of an interesting design. On lurge bores. Yeah, that's a different animal too. Uh, they do come out with firmware semi-regularly so they support more designs i don't the the cartesian one worked okay i don't i didn't see anything wrong with it um if you don't like firmware and things like that uh, now i don't know about the delta one 
So people ask me about that often. What do you think of the lurge for a Delta config? I have no clue because Delta could be could be kind of tricky depending on what company is making these kinds of things, right? How, how well are they going to implement it? How you know how are they going to consider doing the leveling? Because you know that's kind of like one of the most important parts. We do have a pretty nice coupler here on the bottom for this Bowden tube. Do they give you a collet clip? That would be nice of them if they give you a collet clip. I don't see one. But it's fairly stable. We'll see how that goes. Oh, of course. Yeah, I might be able to squeeze it in there. Where's my pliers? Go. There you go. It's got a Bowden tube that goes from the top so you can feed it through that filament sensor. Just a little tight. Probably I'll line that up before you put that in, but not a huge deal. What else? We did all that. Oh, what buckle? With a buckle. What are they calling a buckle? It says there is some sort of clip for that connector. I really don't care about the spool holder myself. Let's see what's in here then. Second print, there you go. It does have an SD card. There are some important files on the SD card. Uh, I believe they sent me, oh, here you go. I believe they sent me some firmware for this dude. So their uh, version of this clip is a little injection molded one. It, the coupler that they have on here, did they give me a spare that I can show you? It's going to be hard for you to see, but it's like the, it's the metal sleeve type. It's a little different. It's, it's more like relatable to the brass coupling that you would see in like airline and, and such. It's a little different. So there you go. Cool. They did give me one. So the rest of it is spool holder. They give me a spare heater. And then auto leveling and all that good stuff. Okay. So let's peel this off. And get that cleaned up just a bit. Do you want to give away filament now? Or after we start printing? I'm guessing everybody says now, right? N no one's going to say later. Prusa Mini Coupler, it's a lot like that, Gusner. I didn't want to relate it to that uh, completely. It's kind of similar to that, but yes, the brass style coupler. Later, so Magnus and John say later, all right. They're two very trusted sources in this community, so I am going to go with later. And this is one of the things <laughs> that, uh, I always run into with these printers is this nice <laughs> yellow sheen that comes off of these beds. <laughs> it's not real indicative to uh, 3D printing things unless you get this off of here. Four or five times of cleaning usually is what it takes. Cat pee, <laughs> maybe it's money cat. Money cat pee. It's quiet down here today.
There are a few more of these printers that I need to get to soon. Uh, one of them is the Mingda Magician. And I've seen some of those printers going around. I don't think it went all that well. I don't know for sure. But um, that could be an interesting stream. We'll see. I don't even think they're selling that thing yet. I don't know if they're going to try to kickstart it or whatever. But uh, they did send one. So we'll see how that goes. How's Hank doing, James? Thank you very much for asking. So Hank is my dog. I've had him forever. He is a lab mix. He's best dog in the whole wide world, other than your dog, I'm sure. Um, Hank is 13 years old, a little older than that now. He's getting up there. Um, and for, you know, 70 pound ish dog, he's doing pretty good. He, uh, he was having some problems in his mouth, like having some teeth problems. And we weren't, the vet wasn't quite sure what was going on and whatever. And, you know, he's pretty old. So they were reluctant to, to put him out so that they could clean his teeth. So they ran a bunch of tests, of course. You know how vets do things. They ran a bunch of tests and blood work and all that good stuff. And they appeared to be good, all the tests. So they went ahead and elected to clean his teeth up and just see what was going on in there. And they pulled a couple of his teeth because, you know, being that old, um, there, was, there were some issues here and there. So they pulled a couple, but they also found a mass. And it uh, was like on his upper jawline, and I guess it was causing him some serious pain. And uh, they did remove it, but they're not really sure how that's going to pan out. So old Hank is, uh, he's winding down. He's still in good spirits right now. That, that's, that's, what we, that's the best we can hope for. Uh, he's he's doing okay. In fact, we went on a walk yesterday. He was pretty happy about it. But, you know, it's... There's not much you can say about it except when pets get old, it sucks. It really sucks. Especially when you've had them for, you know, all their life. It's hard. Pop. All right. QQS Pro. I don't want to bring the stream down by that, but Hank's a great boy. He's doing good right now. But thank you for asking, James. All right, what do we want to do here? Let, first off, let's see if... Uh, I don't know. I think they sent me some firmware for this. Maybe that was another company. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of something else because I don't see any firmware in this email chain. So let's go for it. Get the myriad of baggies. I think I've said myriad already today. I need to use another one. Let's plug it in and just see what happens, shall we? I feel like it's way past coffee break time. That's usually what, like an hour and a half in? I started a little later today, though. We're like an hour and 15 in right now. I guess we can look at the touch screen. Thank you. Yes, uh, Hank will make it one way or another. He's a good guy. Ooh, look at that animation. Is that a cheetah? We're going to have to look at that again. It didn't beep or make any noises. You know, you know how I like it when they play songs for us. Let's do that again. Ooh, fancy. Now that was cool. I like it. Stock SD card might cause it to halt. So that's good information. Uh, 
Yeah, I think we could just jump that all together and use a different one, right? Uh, we got one just sitting around here. Around here. We can steal this one. This one is not a very good card. You know, I've been meaning to open another card anyway. Let's just see if we got a new one. So we'll leave out any issues. We have to do, well, actually, let's not, I'm not going to do that yet because i got to go through a leveling sequence and all that good stuff. Okay, what's next? We're powered up. We're going to auto level. Clean up the novel. We shouldn't have to worry about that, I hope. No. Uh, connect your leveling switch. All righty. There's a, like a little metal plate on the back, or on the front, that you stick this on. It is just a micro switch on a magnet, basically. This is very common for deltas. Having a leveling sensor ride on a delta all the time is actually quite tricky for it to be accurate. So sometimes this is the best method. We are going to click on tools. Now, in my opinion, with deltas, this is where the value comes in. Can you make the leveling process accurate and easy? So this is what actually I want to see. Most of the time they can get them to print. That's not an issue. It's can you get them to print on the whole bed? And the center is easy, right? But so it's all about leveling. So we're going to go to tools, auto level, and auto level. Please plug in the leveling switch. Yes. And here we go. going to do it. I feel like we're like watching tennis sometimes and the printer is moving towards the build plates. We're getting ready to see the first layer and there it is. I can't believe it pulled it off. Uh, the SD card, on the, somebody asked about the SD card into the USB drive. This one has a separate SD card and just a little adapter which is pretty common on these machines. So that's what they gave us. While it's doing its thing though, let's just grab an SD card shall we? So we'll make sure that that is not our problem. ER is talking about, thanks for coming to the stream. Uh, FL Sun wins the firmware contest. I love it. Uh, when will Snappy be back? You know, somebody reached out to me the other day and wanted to buy Snappy. I'm like, man, I can't do that to you. That's just not right. And Snappy's still over there. Uh, he is, Snappy's actually will be briefly in a, in a video here coming up soon, so watch for that. Um, We need to make some decisions about our slicing profile as well. Uh, Voron. <laughs> so, I have some thoughts about Voron, and they're probably not the most popular thoughts in the world. I was pretty excited about building a Voron. Uh, it is extremely quiet so far. I was pretty excited about building a Voron. I have had V0 parts, which they're on like V.1 now, and they changed up the motors and a few different things. And I understand that. Uh, if you don't know what Voron is, it's, a, it's an open source design, Core XY. It's the new hotness for like speed printing and stuff. It's just, it's a Core XY printer that's pretty solidly built. Printed Solid has a ton of different kits and things now. Uh, you can, it used to be just kind of, you would get a frame and some part and some motors and then you sourced everything. Well, now they're starting to sell kits. Uh, LDO has put together a lot of kits where you can just get the whole thing. So that's cool. And they're not super expensive. I printed solid. I don't believe they're selling them right at this moment, but they will be very shortly. Um, and I have mixed feel. Whoa, what was that? I have mixed feelings about it's one of those springs extending about Voron right at the moment. Um, I like the design. I like where they're going. Uh, it's awesome that we are starting to see kits, so they're easier to build. They print fast. They look like really good machines, but 
I can, I'm only going to speak from personal experience here. I have seen things on social media, which I, I can't speak to here nor there. Uh, but I'm going to speak to personal experience in my comment section on my videos. People that, there, there are a handful of fans out there that really like Voron, and they're very vocal about it, and they want to trash everything else that exists because Voron is so good. And that's not okay with me. Um, and they like to do the same thing about Clipper, which I've been using Clipper for years, um, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It does work. It does its job. Uh, it, you know, they've added a lot of features to it. They've even gotten away from Octoprint. I mean, there, there's different front ends you can use for it, and that's all fine and good. Kevin O'Connor is the guy that does Clipper. Um, he's done a lot of great work. I don't know him personally, um, as I do some of the other firmware folks, but I don't think that he has any deal with this, but there's really strong opinions about Voron and, and Clipper as a whole, and not a, some of them that I don't like. I would really like to go ahead and build that Voron uh, just to see how it is, but at this point, I kind of got a bad taste in my mouth about the whole thing, so I don't know that I'm going to be doing that. That's just how I feel. Um, there are so many other things that we could do and tackle. We don't need that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's what's happening with Voron. And, you know, honestly, I'm more apt to, to do something with Clipper. We, we have in the past. We've done things with Clipper on the, on the channel. I'm more apt to do things with Clipper uh, than I would be at Voron, with Voron at this point. Okay. So now we're going to take the leveling sensor off. And we are going to move to zero, is what it says, because now we're going to hit... It does give you warnings, please remove sensor and all that good stuff. Uh, now we're going to set offset, because it's, dra it's going to be drastically high. Got the Voron vaccine. James is feeling the same way. Yeah. Uh, well, we can uh, we could install Clipper on anything. I actually have another. I, I am going the the Nitrum way. I have the old school AnyCubic Cosel, the the two hundred dollar old printer kit that I've been playing with Clipper on. And I, I only, I, currently I'm only experimenting with Clipper because I have folks and friends that like Clipper that they're having issues with. So I'm trying to help them troubleshoot them. So I'm not using it that much, uh, but I'm trying to di help them diagnose things. All right, what do they want? They want you to do paper test, of course, right? Um, and, Nappin brings up Prusa fanboys, and I get it. I get where you're trying to go with that, Nappin. I do. Uh, but it's a little different scenario. I have never personally been attacked anything about Prusa. I've never, I've never been called stupid because. I didn't have, I didn't, I wasn't using a Prusa machine for a project. Let's put it that way. And that's not okay. So now we're just setting Z offset. The offset, it's the offset from the nozzle to the probe that you're using. So because that probe is sitting on a magnet, it's going to be much lower than the nozzle, right? So now we're getting ballpark from the offset from that probe and the nozzle edge, nozzle tip. To where it will actually print. That's what, what we're dialing in. And the paper, somebody brought up a good point the other day about um, leveling to a piece of paper. Um, so that looks like a good offset. We'll see how close we are. So when you're leveling on a piece of paper, 
when you when you start up Gcode, it's going to go to where you your layer height. So you start printing, it goes home, which should be zero zero zero. Then it's going to start the head at point two, right? It's going to lift. It's going to be that far from where it thinks zero is, and that's you know your where you have just decided to set the offset. Uh, so the paper, you're not trying to get a gap with the paper. If you're going, if you if you're trying to set it zero, you're trying to say, okay, I am super close to the bed right now, and this is where zero is going to be. That way, you are ready for that layer height. So you're not trying to set a gap with that paper. You're just trying to determine without crashing where zero would be, unless the firmware has taken that into account, which some do. So just uh, somebody pointed that out the other day and I thought, you know, that's a great point. We probably should talk about that more. Okay, so I think we are ready for a heat up. Are we heating? 220, 27, 25, the hot end. Okay, we're heating on both, excellent. Gusner's leaving us. See you later, Gusner. That's also a good point. Uh, representing how much the hot end will grow due to heat. Guster's three. <laughs> Chris is basement fanboy. That, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, uh, how, I mean, how, do they, how do they say that? The Sculptio? Whatever those are. They're like Scara like. Printers that kind of, they had they have a, a circle motion. I have seen those in craft stores before, and I was like, "What? Uh, those are awesome." Yeah, yeah that's um, that's a shame. It, they're, it's a great project. I would actually kind of like to know how how Kevin feels about this whole thing. We need some Jesse PLA filament to print. What colors do we want? I have a handful of them. Now, I don't have all 43, like you could win if you entered our contest. Uh, but I have a few. I got bold blue, blood red glitter. Let me walk over here and I will shout them to you. Uh, Jesse P.O.L.A., where are you? I have Moon Blue, I believe it is called. I have some mixtape stuff. So you get the mixtape stuff if you're part of the subscription, the Jesse PLA subscription, uh, which there are open slots if that's something you're interested in. I have Safety Orange. We haven't done any orange in a while. We like to call this Retina Burning Orange. Let's do safety orange. I've been meaning to open this anyway. I really dig safety orange. Just looking to see what other ones we have. I've got the black with the glitter in it. What was that one called? Midnight black or something? Glitter is really hard to see though. No, that one's mixtape. Let's do safety orange. I like safety orange. We did blood red glitter not too long ago, so let's uh, let's do some retina burning orange. That's the good stuff right there. I've been meaning to open this and use it for another project anyway. So 
so these feed from the top. That spool holder that we have won't clear. So I think we're just going to have to mind it. What else we got to do anyway? Uh, do I have a decent size? Here's one. Motorhead Mitch is here. What's up, Mitch? Team Orange approves. That's right, Team Orange. It's called Soul Black. Okay. With glitter. So there's a, a glimmer of hope. I like it, Dave. One of my favorite printed solid colors is, uh, I believe you call it, is it Purple Eater? It's a very interesting purple color. I really enjoy Purple Eater. Um, it reminds me of, like, Grape Ape Gum from the 80s. Some of you might not remember Grape Ape. But he was a Hanna-Barbera character. Oh, there ain't no way you're going to be able to line that up. Oh, it has like a 3D print. I didn't realize there's a little coupler on top where you put the filament through. That has a 3D printed coupler. That Bowden tube would have to be so much longer for you to be able to line that up. So there's what I'm talking about, is there's a gap on top. I don't know which way the coupler goes. I don't know if you can push that in or not. There's a gap on top. So you got your spool holder up here. You feed it down inside this cover. Well, there's a gap in between this PTFE tube that goes into the filament sensor and where it loads up here. It's supposed to be longer than that. So if you pushed it up and lengthened it, it would be fine. But it's about halfway in, so that's not going to do us any favors. So what we're going to do is tell it that everything is fine with the filament sensor. Everything is awesome. There you go. Be singing that the rest of the day. I will assume the role of filament sensor for the day. That's right. <laughs> grape ape, grape ape. I believe that's all he said was grape ape. All right. So do we have any loading tools? Move, level, heat, extrude. We have change. Let's just extrude. 10 millimeters in. I guess I should have used change so it had to beep. But the the tube's not actually all that long, so. Well, you know what? Let's test the change. Just because we're here, we got time. Nice. So this one changes better. Some of these printers that you have a change button, and it's gonna make you go out and then run it back in. This one you have an in and out option. And you can also stop it. So that's much better than some of these I've seen. <laughs> everything is awesome to every, everything the Speed Racer score. I can't do it. That would be pretty awesome, though. You know, 
I have a question. Excuse me, I have a question. That is one fat bead of filament. Is that a point four novel? Of course, they give you Cura. Now I'm curious. I might have to look at the SD card just to see what, what they got it set at. I wonder if the uh, advertisement says anything about the nozzle size. Because it is a volcano esque hot end. It said it is a point four on the ad, so that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so how fast do we actually want to do this? Oh, the lulls bot friender, James. Uh, yeah, that's a that's an issue. Okay. We can talk about that. <laughs> uh, so let's see what, let me just uh, do this real quick. We're not going to do anything super awesome here in the slicing profile. Let's run. Sixty. Let's do infill at a hundred. Um, yeah, fifty percent on that's fine. Let's let's call it seventy. All right, we'll run a little faster than usual. I don't know what my filament settings are. Two fifteen, sixty. Do I have auto cooling? Yes. All right. Let's get some G code. What I do with my brain? Oh, I already put it in there. Nice. I'm going to format that first. See you there, James. Oh, I second the thought. Uh, what are they claiming for speed? Oh, you know what they're claiming. Like uh, 5,000 millimeters a second. You know how this goes. We're not going to break any land speed records, but it will give us time to uh, hang out and do things. All right. I don't suppose they have like an extra. No, just the one on the board. That's something you don't see on the touch on the touch screens like these. You don't see a extra SD card slot. I didn't get it dead in the center.
It's a, uh, it's a fair first layer. Not bad. It's a little tall. Could have probably set it down just a little bit more. This stuff is actually pretty sticky. This uh, <laughs> ultra base ish. Everything is ish now. Never, nothing's original anymore. I should have switched to the other camera mount, and then you could have really seen it. Yes, we already auto level. It was very painless. We threw the sensor on, hit the button, and it did its own thing. What's name of that Tronxy that almost killed you? <laughs> uh, Derek, thank you very much for the two bucks. That was a Tronxy X5S. That was that guy. Oh, it does have baby stepping. Nice. I think we're okay for this. We'll be fine. But uh, if I was uh, if I was going to dial it in super well, I guess I would have bumped that up maybe a tenth. Yes, auto leveling works good. Okay, it is coffee break time. Scott Hackmonkey's here. Welcome, Scott. Yes, we missed. I missed the Tronxy. No. Okay, uh, coffee break. You know how this works. I'm just going to turn the mic off. I'm going to go grab a drink. Everybody go grab your drink while this thing prints. I'll be back, and then we'll do the second spool of filament for the giveaway. Let's go. Coffee for you.
All right, how are we doing? How to get Hank some water and such. I did open the door for him, so he might come through here. I don't know how I would get him on camera, but he might. How are we looking? You can definitely see that wipe. Yes, so, yes, what Pop is talking about is when it killed me. <laughs> um, so what happened? We were doing a live stream just like this, and we were putting together an X5S, and they had many different iterations of that machine. I got, I don't know what version mine was, but they used, like, I don't know, 5 millimeter, 6 millimeter acrylic for the A and B motor mounts, and when I went to, um, tension the belt I pulled it forward and one of those mounts broke and shattered so the motor come flying up and then one of those fragments hit me right here under the eye uh, and that all happened live so uh, yeah so that's what we were always talking about when the trunks he tried to kill me crank up the speed to max You never know what the firmware has inside it. It does give you an output, like it says right now, 22 millimeters a second. I hear Hank. Hank doesn't like going down the stairs, but I have a walkout door, and sometimes I'll open it up for him. So you can, you want to come in here, so he can, uh, so he can come in, and this little area right here is sectioned off. Uh, and he doesn't like being in closed spaces. He doesn't like being told what to do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you're going to see all of the filament particles on my floor. But we can change from uh, 3D printing cam to to Hank Cam for a moment, if you'd like. There he is. Hank. See? Say hi. <laughs> Say, I'm an old gray dog. And He says, would you let me out of here now, please? Because I don't like it over here. <laughs> Look this way. I know you, he hears the 3D printer running, and he's like, oh, that's one of those things that moves on its own. I don't like those. He's a good boy. So there you go. There's the Hank cam. You, there's a lot of videos, whether you, you, you'll never know it, but there's a lot of videos where he's just standing down around here uh, while I'm filming and, you know, trying to see if I'm eating something or whatever. <laughs> so that happens a lot. So now you're famous, Hank. He's actually been on the channel a couple of times on accident. When we, we were building something, I don't remember exactly what. But he come walking through right in the middle of the shot, and I just left it. I figured with a dog in it, it'd be more popular anyway. So there you go. You want back out there? Here. There you go. Go find something. What he wants me to do is go sit on the couch so that we can sit on the couch together. Hank needs a treat. He probably does need a treat. I just gave him, uh, I had a handful of crackers when I went upstairs. I just gave him one of those. So, now, <laughs> good boy snacks. He will get tons of snacks later, I promise. Uh, we'll see if text-to-speech works on that. You know, I didn't even check the tension on this extruder. I should have. Hank needs good boy snacks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew, for the five bucks. Speed it up a bit. Uh, auto cooling is probably what is slowing it down. You can adjust Z, you can pause. 
Is there a speed? There's a speed. That's 160% of what it was. So it took it from about 22 millimeters a second to 35. So let's see what it does. Um, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, it's kind of hard. That orange is kind of hard to tell. Maybe the bottom few layers are not quite as consistent as I've seen before, but not bad. Let's, um, oh, here we go. Infill is going to be the speedy part. It's just dumping it in the. It's amazing these things work at all. Um, let's give away another spool of filament. So. So here's how this works. This is Jesse P. Olay from Printed Solid. You will get a spool of filament. This is open to everyone in the United States and Canada. Sorry, international folks. Hank Snack Fund from Jesse. <laughs> Uh, Dave, thank you very much. Hank will appreciate that. Uh, dogs, 3D printing dogs are the coolest. Um, I am going to put a word in the chat. And the word is not case sensitive. Uh, you can only put in the word once. If you put the word in multiple times, it will take you out of the running for that filament. So if you live in the U.S. or Canada, you'd like to win a spool of Jesse PLA filament, courtesy of Printed Solid, you will enter... Let's make sure... Come through. You can do that. Hank, in the chat right now. They're coming through. He's going to hear his name. He's going to come back through here. Yeah, Zimmy's here. Zimmy, how's it going? You can see the advertisement scrolling by. Make sure you go check out the contest, get your entries in. Uh, we only ran the contest for two weeks, so it's going to end this coming Wednesday. So make sure you have all your entries in so you can win up to 43 spools of filament. Hank is a good dog. He's the best. Except that one time, about 11 years ago, when he ate my remote. Other than that, he's been a really good dog. <laughs> uh, 150 default and max 200. Yeah. Uh, Jesse PLA, is, it, it has become my go-to. Um, I've used it a lot over the years. There's, there's other brands that I really like, but it's consistent and you can't beat the price. And now they're shipping to Canada. In fact, I was muling Jesse PLA to other countries uh, on the side as a side business, whether Dave knows that or not. Uh, <laughs> but it's good stuff. It's affordable. Uh, it comes in a bunch of colors. So, And Printed Solid is just, uh, they're pretty all right for a 3D printing company. Uh, they do a really nice job, and they ship out things fast. And free shipping on everything over $45. No, that's probably, that's just for the lower 48. But still, uh, it helps me out greatly. So I really like it. By the way, Dave is not paying me anything for any of these contests or any of these giveaways. I just happen to like Printed Solid. You have to mention that sometimes. All right, they do a solid job. They do us a solid. All right, ready? Who's going to win the filament? Jenna Situ, that's as close as I can come. Uh, if you are, Canada is free over $300. That's good to know. 
Sorry, Canada. Uh, if you are in the U.S. or Canada, please send me an email with your information to brotherchris81 at gmail.com. It's coming up in the chat right now. Give me all your info, and uh, they will get you a spool of filament of your choice. Congratulations. I forgot clapping for the first winner, but clapping. Okay. Now, do you guys really want to talk about Lulzbot? I mean, really want to talk about it? Um, I have had some experience with Lulzbot over the years. Um, I had a mini for a long time. I got that from Printed Solid. Um, it was a fine machine. They're, they're kind of... There's been a lot going on, a lot that went on with Lulzbot. You know, they kind of went out of business, they changed hands. Things have been different. Um, the old school machines like Taz 6, uh, the Mini, machines like that with the old Greg's Wade extruder, you could get, you could flip out tool heads and stuff like that. There wasn't anything wrong with the printers per se, but there wasn't anything special about them either. That's kind of an old school way of doing things. And they never really changed that up a lot. They, they had kind of a thing that they did. They're well put together. They are super expensive. Um, but they were all built here, so there's mixed feelings about, about the Lulzbot machines. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to see one of these new Lulzbot machines. Um, what is it called again? What's the name of the model? Let me pull it up. Or maybe it hasn't even been released yet. Taz Pro XT? No, that can't be it. Sidekick. Okay. Wow. I didn't even know it was that expensive. So it's still pricey. Um... They're assembled here. Well, that's a good point. But they, they are stationed here. Um, you don't get the 45 degree extrusion. Not sure that I get that either. Uh, so, I don't know what they're doing. I've heard mixed results. I have not personally seen one, so I can't make a call. Um, I probably will never see one unless it's like it murder for Earth or something. From what I've seen, there's a little bit of mystery here. They are pretty high priced. Um, the build volume is low. I, I just don't know how you're going to get any value out of that, right? And, what, and, you know, what does that mean? Well, at that price point, at that build volume, I'm not sure who their customer is. You know, they, as far as support goes and ecosystem and things like that, that's all fine and good. But... Especially in a hobby market, I don't know that there's still room for that kind of thing. I don't know that Lulzbot is going to be relevant with a machine like this. So, I really can't say anything personally about it, because I don't know much about it. And that, that's not right for me to do. But, when I saw it come out, I thought, hmm, they're going to try that, huh? <laughs> so, so, there you go. That's really all I know about it. Seven forty seven, yeah. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I mean, you know, that's just all we all we can do. We can hang on for the ride. Um but I'm not sure what they're driving at. We should Dave Randolph and I should host a uh a chat one of these days and we'll talk about things like that because he knows the market a lot better than I do right uh, because he deals with vendors and he's been in it forever so I would be curious to get some of his points now I know he probably has some personal opinions but that's that's another story 
But that might be an interesting conversation. Yes, I am I am just north of Kansas City. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> really? Come on, man. Yeah, I I feel that. If you own a laws bot, it might be good because of the, that's a good point because of the other tools. You're just west of St. Louis. Nice. From St. Joe. Nice. Hello, Keith. Yeah, Scott is not too far from me at all. We have a lot of Kansas City people around. Well, Stephen, you're going to have to let us know then. Um... I'd be interested in like a tour of the machine and see what you think of the whole thing. Near Joplin and Carthage, nice. You're welcome for the content. Andy lives in KC too. Sweet. Dan is west of Salem. We've got a lot of close folks here. Yes, I do. I'm I have been in Kansas City my whole life. If Lulzbot, eh, I don't know. I was going to say, if Lulzbot would like to send me a machine and get my thoughts, I'd be up for that challenge. But, I don't think I want that headache. <laughs> yeah, keep us keep us updated, Steven. Uh, we, we definitely want to know how it goes. There's a little bit of noise in the side of that guy, but it's not bad. It's looking pretty good. We did up it to 150%, so now it's clocking like 32 around the perimeter. So that's pretty good. Ooh, it's starting to look nasty outside. I think we're supposed to get like thunderstorms today. So if the power goes off during the stream, you'll know what happened. I'm back. Hank would not have been happy if I left him out back with uh, if it started raining. So, not gonna win the speedboat race today. No. Um, nice. Yeah, Steven, I don't know. Maybe we could work something out. If they're, I mean, you know, if they're open-minded about it, maybe we can figure something out. Um, I am curious to see where they go. I've, I've always kind of watched them because... They're different. They're, they, they do things a little differently than others do. So we'll see. Does it have power recovery? Uh, below it says they do. Most of these machines nowadays do. So yes, that's good to know. IDEX is the next thing. Ken Walker, subscribe. Thank you very much, Ken. Uh, IDEX? Um, <laughs> I've started collecting parts for an IDEX build. I don't know how far away I am from starting on it, but it's a massive build, so 
we'll see when we get that done. When is the Voron build? Yeah, I get that a lot. Don't know. I don't know if there will be a Voron build. We talked about that earlier in this stream. We'll do the last spool giveaway um, after we take a look at the Benchy. What do you think about that? I'll make you hang on with me as long as possible. We probably have another... It's 2.13 now. We have a little while before our Benchy is complete. E three D the E three R R F. Um, which one? So that was the one where. Okay, so there is a. I believe. Team Gloomy has that figured out now. Um, we could do something on that because yeah, that was the one that we didn't actually get the screen going, but we did get it going on the Flymaker board, I believe. So yeah, we could do something like that. IDEX doesn't seem to be a good option. The biggest advantage to IDEX that I see is replicating parts. If you had, um, I mean, you could do it with, with other printers too, right? But that and, and soluble supports would be pretty handy. They're just an interesting setup. Two nozzles, two hot ends has always been kind of a challenge to do. And IDEX solves a lot of the issues that you see with a dual head. Um, but for me, it's more of an experiment, right? Put it, putting it together, getting it to work, seeing how it all, all fits together. So that's, that's the experience for me. But, um, I could see different scenarios where just two heads would be all you needed. Replicating parts back to back being one of them. I don't know. It's just, a it's another machine on the list, right? I think we're about done with the container. So the only problem with the safety orange is no matter how you try to focus, it just won't. It's just too bright. <laughs> you hope it doesn't kill you? Yes, good luck with that build, oh, Mind Forge. I hope I hope you do well. Uh, Ryan is here. What's up? Paul Cumber's here. Hey, Paul. Supports, yep. PLA and CF Nylon, yep. Um, doing, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's huge. Uh, I have done a lot with, uh, trying to do TPU and PLA, you know, using, Using TPU for like exteriors, for soft surfaces, for cases and, and, and things like that. And then, you know, using cheaper PLA for the inside. That's kind of a challenge, but that would be really cool to have an IDEX for. From what I saw on here, all of the drivers were the same. There's only four. I really couldn't tell they've got those huge heat sinks on them, but I think they're all the same. I'm not 100% on that. Paul, the build size just came by. It's a 260 by 330. Mixing and uh, yeah, we 
we had a three color mixing setup that I just gave away. That's another thing, and it never worked very well, so I'll finish that thought. Mixing is very interesting, I agree. Uh, that's something else that, that happened recently. I gave away nine 3D printers. <laughs> uh, and I've got a handful more that need to go. But uh, and that's everybody asks me, what do you do with all these 3D printers? Well, I give them away. And I went on, uh, after we kind of did some of the remodel, I had to go through and clean up a lot of machines and stuff. And most of these machines, I mean, a lot of them were non-functioning, right? It was just parts and stuff that, you know, leftover stuff that kind of used to be a, an old 3D printer. But uh, I did manage to give away nine of them. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. So now at least we have a little bit more room. Uh, the three color was a GTEC 301. They don't even make it anymore, but they did have a mixing nozzle. Three D printers absolutely have a habit of replicating, especially around me. Uh, uh, any, I don't currently have any plans for a Voron build. Ever try printing with trimmer line? I have personally not. Did I keep the tool changer? Absolutely. The tool changer is still there. Tool changer is actually going through a bit of a uh, rebuild. I'm pulling off some of the tools and switching them out to other ones. I hope I have a lot of other parts for the tool changer. I hope to get some content out on that soon. It's been kind of stalled. I keep running into other projects that jump ahead of it. But yeah, we'll see more tool changer stuff soon. Yep, yeah, we'll, uh, yes, exactly, leftover parts turned into a new one. Uh, printed with trimmer line, I personally have not. I hear that can, can be hazardous to your health in some situations. Gotta catch them all. If I need room, I will let you know. Uh, there, there's probably going to be more that need to go out the door. And that was a rhyme and didn't think it was. Um. You've printed with, you have a five pence full coming in Wednesday? Nice. I guess it depends what line you use. I don't know a lot about what's in it. The Chameleon, that is another build that I want to do that I haven't had time to get to. I have a Chameleon 2 kit um, that I need to get up and running and have not, I would like to live stream it. Um, the first, the Chameleon 1 turned out okay. I, I would still get, uh, Missed layers once in a while. I'd get a missed load and the and the print would fail. I'd still get that occasionally, but I'm hoping the the second version is a lot better. But we will see. It's on the list. Yep, you start with one. That's how it started for me. I, I, yeah. Let us know how that trimmer line goes. But that, that's how it started with me. So I had one three D printer, and then it was broken, and I needed a three D printed part. So then I had to get another printer to print a part for that. And then uh, the story just keeps going on. I feel like we need to put this uh, down more at the level so we don't get so much effector in the shot. What do you think about that? Here you go, messing with camera angles. This is how things go terribly wrong. Let's flip back over here so you don't get sick. We don't want you to get sick. You know you shouldn't have eaten those oysters, but you did it anyway. I have no idea what I'm talking about most of the time. That's what makes it fun.
I had a couple of days off last week from my day job, which was very nice. So I have to go back tomorrow. Not really looking forward to it. We have to move a whole data center in a couple of weeks. Not looking forward to that either. I would like it to be done. Let's put it that way. I want the project to be over, but not really looking forward to cut over day because you never know quite what might happen and who will be impacted by said change. So that'll be interesting. Let's see if this is any better. I think that would be much better. Uh, starting with V2, still the Micro Swiss, nice. Mike Whaley did tremor line on stream once. That doesn't surprise me. Good old Mike. God rest his soul. I miss Mike. Him and Jimmy. I miss Jimmy as well. They were always interesting characters. Always happy to see you. Bob, uh, that was asked before. They all look the same to me, but I am not sure uh, it, which driver is which. I'd have to pull it apart. I will report on that if we end up reviewing this thing. Cutover day is nerve-wracking. This cutover is going to take 60 hours, so I'm going to be pretty tired by the time it's all over with. Yep. Tom Law is here. What's up, Tom? Yeah, we're consolidating. So we're actually moving from, we're moving all the way across the country. We're not physically doing everything, right? We're just standing up a new one and then switching it over. But um, it's, um, it's going to be a mess. Uh, I, it, it depends. It could, it could go wrong. I have faith in them, but you know, you always miss something, right? And you're going to have to fix it forward. You, you can't go back. You're just going to have to keep going. But uh, we'll see. Google is trying to uh, say that I told it something. There we go. Nice. Uh, holy God. Tyrone asks if there's a web page that you can systematically process a print and try to figure out what's wrong. Yet yeah, somebody says it below. Uh, teaching tech has a, a, a website. I'm not sure how it works, but I think he tries to to troubleshoot what you've seen and then point you to videos that might help. So check him out. Um, that's a big ask. Uh, it's it's hard to um, it's hard to do that via the web. Any plans for a subtractive? Not really. Um, I've got you know these mini CNCs. None of them ever very worked out very well, so I don't really have any plans on going forward. But because there's so much other stuff to do, but maybe you never know what's going to happen, right? Have I ever tried a TH3D Easy Board? I have not. Yeah, uh, I don't know what shifts I'm going to get during that 60-hour period, but we'll find out, I guess. It's not bad at all. Not bad. It's fairly consistent. Definitely going to have to tune in with that um with that 
larger heat block. Definitely gonna have to tune the filament in a bit. We got, we got, we got a little bit of stringing. You can see a little bit of droop on the front porthole, but um, that's not uncommon when you have that longer nozzle like that, but not a huge deal. Right. So, Tyrant, what I tried to do, because, um, you know, you, I, you get those questions all the time. What I tried to do was break it down from a new printing, a new printing user's point of view. And I did it with the Ender 3. So there's, there's six videos out there on an Ender 3 from build to dialing in to slicing, trying to show you what you're looking for, try, trying to show you that this is where I would start and this is how I would end up trying to get a better print off this printer and also giving you quick upgrades that would that would be cheap and easy uh, to help you out. So I have an Ender 3 series out here out there that tries to do exactly what you're looking for. That might help you, but as far as something where you can just look at your print to go to a website and say, hey, I have that problem, I don't know that anybody's conquered that yet. Maybe Teaching Tech has, I don't know. I've never checked it out. But um, I do know that he has some sort of web web tool that might help. The Simplify 3D guide is good. Uh, you're correct. That is a good web page to go to. It doesn't cover everything, but a lot of the big ones. Any good movies or TV shows? I don't get a lot of time to watch movies or TV shows, so I would not know. You hate it when your porthole droops, doesn't everyone? Is the plan for the contest results? So it will be done um, in a video. So what I'm going to do for the for the people that are entering the contest to win the filament, what I'm going to do is get after it's over, I'm going to get with all the judges via a video call. I'll record some of their responses. We'll do some honorable mentions. We'll show some of the projects. Uh, we're just going to go through it. I'm going to put it all in the video, and the winners will be announced in that video. And then uh, when that after that comes out, I'll get a hold of the winners. And uh, we'll get all that sorted out and get you your filament. So it will be, uh, it will be in a video, not a live stream. Leveling your bed fixes everything. <laughs> Don't forget your e-steps. I don't know what... Uh, Z-Hop is probably set to like 0.6. I think that's usually where I start. Motorhead Mitch, I hear that. Like that smash button. Milk crate CNC. Joe's always coming up with cool stuff. <laughs> thoughts on the rat rig. Uh, I don't have any current thoughts. I've looked at it a little bit. Don't know much about it. Haven't had a whole lot of time to investigate it. 
Tomorrow War? I saw the uh the ad for that. What is this Z-Hop you speak of? <laughs> The Mars too, nice. Rat rig V core looks like a Hevo on steroids, yeah. You know, a lot of this we just keep doing over and over, right? Rat rig over a Voron. I don't know enough to comment. Vez 3D, I don't know that one. I don't know that we're going to do a Voron build. Uh, we might just pass that. The dragon lizard? Hey, how's it going? So what else? I got all kinds of different things I need to really get done. Um, I've got one of those Big Tree Tech octopus boards I need to check out. I haven't even started on it yet. Um, I'm thinking about replacing some of my, maybe not replacing, we'll see how it goes, but swapping it out for one of my Duet Duex setups, just to see how it goes. So that's definitely on the list of things to do. Do Rat Rig because you want to build one, all right. Add a message on the screen. It'll die down soon enough, right? <laughs> uh, Voron's actually kind of getting long in the tooth for printing projects. Um, any recommendations for an IDEX? I don't currently have one. I know that there was somewhat of a, a affordable one out there. I don't remember who made it, but it was making the rounds. I don't remember that one, but... Um, I don't have a recommendation for IDEX. The one that I'm looking at is the one from John Molak, um, the, the Moldex printer. If you would like to check out that project, I can get you a link. But um, that's the one I'm looking at building. Let me find it here. You can check that one out. It's quite the project. It's going to take some. Uh, it's going to take a long time to put it together, but it's pretty neat too. A challenge to build a working printer with the cheapest parts possible. That's always a fun project. Sourcing parts like that, just sourcing them from scratch, I can't get much. Clo I I can get kind of close to two hundred dollars. A switch wire, yeah. Printed Solid does have parts for switch wire. What drivers? I'm usually just throwing 22 out nines on everything now. Uh, I mean, we could try a few different ones, but uh, 22 nine seems to be kind of the standard. I don't need anything bigger than that. Tronxy has an IDEX now. Vector 3D, nice. I like watching his content.
Maker Viking, yeah, he's turning out some really cool stuff. Tom's got some uh, pretty good ideas. Yeah, the Moldex is sweet. It's gonna, like I say though, it's uh, it's quite the build, and it's not cheap to build either. Trunks, the IDEX 5 that sounds pretty cheap to me for two complete setups. Um, sounds a little too good to be true, maybe. Rat rig IDEX keyboard combo. There's so many things out there. Urban, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining the stream. JG Maker, that's the one I was thinking of. That That's the one that they asked me about, and I didn't have the time to do it. Tom's building a 2-4. All right. Around 300. That's probably a pretty good mark on the for the trying to get him down as close as possible. A linear rail upgrade kit for the Ender 3. I couldn't even tell you. Um, do they make such a thing? <laughs> I'm sure somebody does, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't know. Alex Kiss, there you go. That, there's a name that, I miss that as well. Alex is the man. I love watching his content, and he's funny. Uh, he is one smart dude. Not the best printer. I can't imagine that it is. But I've been surprised before. Um... Then you make a guide on how to use SKR on Marlin. Should be pretty much the same procedure on a Prusa i3, right? Well, I mean, it, for Marlin, yes. Uh, if you're going to use straight up Marlin. Now, if you're going to use Prusa style firmware, uh, that's not going to work out. Brian Vines is a guide for Ender 3 Rails. Nice. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Ender 5 stuff anymore. My buddy Dave Wilson, he lives down the street from me. I gave him my Ender 5, and he does videos on Ender 5. Um, he's really big into tool change. He's got a, he created his own tool change setup, so he can manually swap out tool heads. He does a really nice job on those. I don't know if Alex followed up on that. The last thing I saw from Alex, what he he was talking about, um, they were just getting moved in, and he was doing kind of a tour of the basement that he was going to have access to. That's the last thing I heard out of Alex. And I don't remember if that was a Patreon thing or if that was actually on YouTube. Let's move up just a bit. Nope, nope, nope. You can tell it's just a little hot.
I never really cared for my Ender 5. I never did much with it. Um, and that's why, I mean, I just, you can't do them all, right? So, that's why Dave has mine. Dave really likes them, so. But he, you know, he knows the tool. He's got like four of them. He knows how to do it, and he knows, you know, what modifications work and what don't. So, more power to him. They all fade in and out, absolutely. Bear Mara, love that name. Pie ones, yep. Uh, Greg was talking about the Bear Project. Um, they have like setup and parts now for the Duet Mini. So I think that's what we're going to do for our next Bear Project. I do have one lined up. I need a few more parts. But uh, I want to do another Bear and just like put crazy stuff on it. And uh, that Duet Mini is a cool little board. So we're going to check that out. Uh, I just had the regular, the low end, the original Ender 5. Keep up the good work. Urban, thank you very much. 219 Swedish crones, I believe is what S-E-K is. I think, maybe I'm way off, but thank you very much either way. That is much appreciated. I do have a lot more streams coming up. I probably won't do next week because that is, uh, my birthday is on Saturday, and I believe I have to work on Sunday morning, so that's going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, and then the week after that, I have to cut over the data center. But maybe like we'll be back at it um, like the last weekend in July. We'll do we'll do our next stream. Still running the FT5. Heck yeah. Um, I still got that 6 over there. I've been playing around with different hot ends on it. I'm trying to get it where I can print large flexible prints. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. So I've been working on my 6. Which is very similar to a 5. As far as you know, mount parts and all that good stuff. But like you were, you were dealing with Mitch. Like the... The Cat 5 cables. Eventually, I'm going to have to do something with that because those aren't always that consistent. Thank you. Nice. I got it right. Swedish Chrome. <laughs> Your cat needs food to live. I hear that. About twenty-five dollars. Nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All the tips are much appreciated. Dragonfly hot end. Yep. Yeah, Hamera might be the way to go. I've got one of those Omnia drop setups that I'm trying to fashion over to there too. I haven't been able to spend a ton of time on it. <laughs> Shocking. But uh I got to get that done. That's one of my one of the projects I really need to finish because I've been needing to make something for someone. And it requires that large bed size. Um, I was looking at I was looking at some of the what they say about
Yeah, there you go. I was just looking at some of the stats on this printer. I was kind of curious on some things, but it looks right. All in all, this thing has turned out really well. The leveling is always what I'm concerned about the most, and that was really painless. And we we got a pretty good first layer first time out. So, more than happy with that. And plus the magic drawer. I really like the magic drawer. I gotta put some benchies in there. Oh, we're bridging. That's always the best part. Omnia drops are the coolest. Those are great extruders. Really good quality robot parts. Yeah? Robot parts are always fun. Gary almost missed the whole benchy. Well, at least you made it to the end. Wood PLA is good for bridging? Huh, nice. I got some matte PLA the other day from somebody that looks pretty sharp. Uh, matte is kind of a thing right now. Cool, cool. So what else are we doing today? Anybody else got plans? Uh, I know Glenn and James are still doing streams at uh, 4.30 Eastern. So that's coming up here in less than an hour. Go check that out. Bo is here. Better late than never, Bo. How are you? No acrylic parts that blew up. We still talk about it pretty much every stream, Bo, so don't worry. <laughs> Any plans to build a Voron? Not at this moment. I did have plans, but plans I think have changed. I don't know. I gotta talk to my uh, my. So let me put this out there. Uh, anyone that ha that's three D printing in this community, there's lots of awesome people that are always willing to help. I highly recommend if you don't have a set of go to people for three D printing. You should build your own little group that you communicate with regularly. Because I have a set of folks, uh, four or five folks that I talk to on a regular basis, and I always run my ideas past them. And, you know, get, trying to get their take on, on certain decisions and how they feel about the things, because they know what's going on in the community as well. So you, I like to get a couple of different takes. Now, I haven't, and I call them my, you know, my inner circle, my 3D printing inner circle. And uh, I have not talked to my inner circle folks about, about Voron builds yet, but I would like to. So I, uh, I'll probably run that past uh, some folks just to see what they think about the whole thing. Currently, I don't have plans on it, but, you know, things change. Maurice, it's almost bedtime. Yep, we're almost done here. We're going to give away one more spool of filament after the bench is done, and then we'll be done for the day. Waxing the car. Reclaimed oak tops. Nice. I was your go-to guy. Nice. <laughs> Well, that's nice of you to say. And see, that's the good thing about about this stuff. You learn, right? And now, old curmudgeon's a pro. He can help other people. Gary's working on the rat rig. Sweet. Which is a cool, cool name. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you assume we have friends. Of course you have friends. You just may, you might not even know it. Never say never, that's true. Tim Jackson, thank you very much for the sub. The whole 3D printing, absolutely. The whole 3D printing community is your inner circle. That's very true in, in some respects. Try not to give out bad info. You know, sometimes that's harder to do than, than I'd like to admit. Sometimes uh, it just happens. There is a world outside 3D printer for under. Yeah. Sometimes it's kind of scary though. It's printing it's printing pretty well, I would have to say. End is the best part. Nice. No. I, I really Steven, I really haven't looked at a lot rat rig at all. Um, I, that's one of those things that I've been meaning to do. That and the Jubilee, I haven't, I haven't looked into that yet either. Kind of keeping an eye on that one, but I need to find out more about it. Veteran is here. What is up? Uh, you might know Veteran as Wester. He creates all kinds of sweet models. Everybody say hey. Yes, you can find your inner circle at a rip rap festival. That would uh that's always good. That Mysterio is amazing. You are correct. That thing is awesome. Murph 2022. Yes. Why are you not so I don't know, veteran. A legacy of War on Legacy. Yeah, I don't even know much about all the models. Uh, I was looking at zero, but now it's 0 0.1, and now I don't have some of the right parts and all that. So, um, it's so the it is a bit hot. So there is definitely some smoosh there at the bottom. What Bo is talking about, that's real common to see. And again, it's printing a little hotter than I'd like it to. But right in there, you see where it's smooshed. That's pretty common. It's pumping way too much heat into it. But it's got a, like a volcano style block bow, so I'm not surprised. Gary, thank you very much for the $20. Much appreciated. Yes. Uh, I'll be there next year for sure. Yeah, it's just it's a little bit blown out there at the bottom. I I know what you're what you're seeing. Okay. And don't pull these off hot kids, but That one is on there, man. Maybe my first layer was way better than I thought it was going to be. We'll let it cool down 10 degrees and we'll take a look. That's all I need to do is pull off some of this coating on stream and then tell you not to do that. Printing is complete. Cool. I really kind of like this interface. I like the... Um, it's got more options on it than a lot of these touch screens do. And I definitely like that startup animation. That was slick. Cool. While this is cooling down, let's give away the last spool of Jesse PLA filament. What do you say? So, here's how this works. What am I using? What camera am I using for the close up? It is a Sony Handycam. I always forget the number. 
FDR AX53. It's pretty inexpensive for a camera and it does a really nice job. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Anybody that is in the US or Canada is eligible to win a spool of filament of Jesse PLA from Printed Solid. Here's how you enter. I am going to enter a phrase into the chat. If you enter that phrase, then you will be entered to win a spool of filament. The phrase is not case sensitive and you can't enter it twice. If you enter it twice, it will take you out of the running. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in a phrase. And you are going to enter this phrase in the chat to be entered to win. Enter Benchy now to be able to, to win the filament. Going like crazy. Got it on my. <laughs> Did you see that thing with Stefan? He like ground up a hundred benches and made filament. That was pretty sweet. Is Walter still alive? I believe Walter's still alive. Um, I talked to him. He, I talked to him not too long ago, and he called me the other day, and I missed the call. Uh, so I believe he's still kicking. So, hopefully, he's in good shape. All right, the benchies have slowed down. We ready to roll it? James has won a roll of Jesse PLA filament from Printed Solid. James, if you would like to claim your filament, Please send me all of your information in an email, name, and address. There's the email there in chat. And I will get you set up and we will get you a spool of filament. Cool. All right. Hopefully James is still in the chat and he, uh, he saw all of it. stuff really sticks. All right. Congrats to all of today's winners, by the way. I'm glad that we could, uh, we could do that. And Dave's cool about it. Dave's cool. I asked him, I asked him last night, he was like, Hey man, you want to give away some filament tomorrow during the stream? And his response was, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Okay, so our print looks pretty good. So down here you can see it's shinier. That, that is the point where we upped the print speed. We went to like 150% from there. So it, the heat was getting pumped into it down here more than it was up here because it was moving slower. So that's why it's shiny down there and it's not up here. Um, even at the higher speed, the layers are pretty consistent. This is super common, especially on a Bowden printer, to see that inconsistency because it's trying to keep up with the extrusion rate um, and you know get around that tube being a spring. Who knows if linear advance is actually enabled on one of these machines? I'd have to get in there and look. But there's a few missed layers in here. I mean, it's not perfect. Um, up in here, that's kind of messy, messier than I would usually see, but. Again, this is a profile that is not tuned for this machine. There's going to be a lot of tweaks that we could do uh, to make this a lot better. Real easy tweaks, by the way. Um, you can see some the mist down in here. That's going to be, you can tune in um, retraction and things like that. 
that's going to help. We definitely have to dial in temp for this larger heat block. That's going to help a lot of these issues. Um, really, all in all, straight out of the box with my default clunky profile, that really doesn't get tuned much because I don't do a lot of delta prints, honestly, so I don't have a super solid um, profile for a delta. It looks really good. I'm impressed. I'm much more impressed with this one than I was the last Delta that FL Sun sent. Well, for one, it actually completed the part and the heater cartridge didn't go out. And just all in all, this build, the design um, on this one, it's, uh, I'm pretty impressed with the, how rigid it is. The, the linear rails and the, the uprights, it's real solid. Now we just need to see how much speed we can actually crank out of this because I think you could probably tune it up pretty good. Maybe that, maybe, maybe like no review. It's just how fast can it go? Maybe that's what we should do. I don't know. I kind of like this machine though. It's pretty slick. Now what are we going to do next? We'll have to find out. All right. So here we go. Please, if you want to enter the contest to win 43 spools of Jesse PLA, please check out the video. It's been scrolling by all day in the chat. Check out the video that I made. Uh, the contest is going to end Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So be sure to get your entries in for the spool reuse contest and the firmware contest where you do firmware tweaks. Show us what you got. Show us something cool and you might win 43 spools of filament. That's pretty awesome. Uh, thank you to Printed Solid for providing the filament for that contest, as well as for the filament today. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I don't get, unfortunately, I don't get the live stream as much as I'd like to, but uh, we're going to do more. It might be a couple of weeks, but we're going to fit them in, I promise. So thank you for everybody that hung out. Uh, Super Chats, that's always greatly appreciated. And um, take care. Have a good rest of the day. We'll see if it starts thunderstorming here anytime soon. That might be interesting, but take care. We'll see you really soon.